So we kick things off with football on the Sportsmax Zone. Action in the Ren Nephew Jamaica Premier League is heating up as teams jostle for playoff spots as the preliminary round draws to a close. Match Week 20, which began on Sunday, has so far seen these results. No goals between Tivoli and Portmore, two of the hottest teams in the league at the moment in third and fourth positions. Waterhouse 5-1 over Humberland. Uh, advancing their hopes to make the playoffs. Mount Pleasant held 1-1 by Montego Bay United. Fair United 6-2 over Limehole Academy. Kimar Bushy Beckford, the former Waterhouse and Mount Pleasant player, getting a bag of goals for Fair United. And Dunbar Holden, they were 4-2 winners over Malines in a pretty seesaw battle it was. Arnett Gardens and Cavalier, that fixture will be rescheduled due to Cavalier's involvement in the CONCACAF Champions League. And Harbourview will take on Treasure Beach on Wednesday to complete match week 20 in the fixture. So there's the current standings. Cavalier top of the table on 43 points. Mount Pleasant also have 43 points, but Cavalier on goal difference are the leaders. Portmore Tivoli in third and fourth at the moment. Arnett in fifth and some distance behind them. Five points of Arnett Garns are Waterhouse in sixth position. And you'll see there that Dunbar Holden also have 30 points with Waterhouse, which means that they are joined sixth on points. But Waterhouse, with a significantly superior goal difference, um, holds on to the sixth place at the moment. Six teams will qualify for the playoffs, so you can see how dire that battle is. I heard the Montego Bay United coach, Anita Santos, saying that although he's three points off a playoff spot at the moment, he isn't giving up because there are six rounds remaining and um, he will be trying to get as many points as they can to keep their hopes up. Very United, Harbourview, Humberland and Malines follow. Treasure Beach and Lime Hole are the teams at the moment occupying the relegation spots. Now joining us on Zoom to recap match week uh, action so far is uh, Jamaica Premier League analyst Dwight Jeremiah. Uh, always a pleasure to have Dwight on the Sports Mat Zone. Dwight, welcome to our show. I've been listening to you on commentaries and uh, uh, JPL uh, looking, looking pretty hot. And our producers have asked that you address first of all this battle for sixth spot between Waterhouse and Dunbar Holden. Uh, with uh, not too many rounds remaining. Yeah, it's it's really an intense one. Three teams in for just one spot. And uh, I tell you what, all these these three teams are playing some really good football. I mean, Montego Bay on the weekend, that was a game carry. Um, was very, very good against Mount Pleasant. Um, in fact, uh, they could have a case to say they, they, they should have taken all three points. Uh, but yeah, even down the whole end, they... They had, had a little scare. Uh, we saw them the week before, and again this week. That's a lovely goal from Nelson. I mean, I really love this this player. I think when he's on song, he's one who knows where the goal is and one of the natural finishers in the league. But with that pass from Marlon Allen, I mean, that was just that was just lovely cushion. It was almost like he walked into it, didn't break stride um, in hitting that ball in the back of the net. And at any level, you know that that that's a top strike. But I mean. Malines, they were back into the game and, and really were leading at one point. Um, had two quick fire goals in that first half. I think they went in to that half, leading the contest, and they just had to uh, dump the hole and dig deep. But they were better in the second half. And they were a little bit more direct in their play. Um, I think Lenny Hyde just got a, a pass or two out of their play and they were direct with it. But... Yeah, that's Jason Wright getting on the score sheet too. So it was good for, for Malines. They were looking like a team that would really thwart this advance of Dumbo Holden and made it difficult for them to really bring Montego Bay. Montego Bay was in the house watching this one and they were cheering for Malines to get ahead of uh, Dumbo Holden in this contest. And when they were 2-1 off, they felt, yeah, that was it. This Jason Wright strike here, Montego Bay was cheering the loudest in the house at the time. Um, but yeah, Dumbo Holden, they really showed their class and Lenny Hyde had a, a hell of a team talk at half time. And they came out just a little bit more direct, um, was looking to break the lines much quicker. And the even that one of the goals they got was route one. And yeah, that was that was good for Dumbo Holden. Montego Bay, as I said in their game, was was quite good as well, but just lost some grounds in that draw that they pick up against uh, Mount Pleasant. But that's a decent draw you feel on the road against the defending champions and team that is currently joined top of the table with, with, with Cavalier. 
Mm. All right, we are having but, some connecti connectivity issues there, uh, Dwight. Uh, we, 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 uh, well, it, it is improving, so we'll stick with it. Um, uh, talk to us then about the, the, the fact that, well, in the first meeting between them, Waterhouse had beaten Don Beholden in day 2-1. I think it was the teenager, Brian Burkett, getting a, a late strike there for them. But of the two teams, I, I, I see recently they've been getting goals, both of them. So both of them are addressing the urgency of this point of the season to get into the playoffs. It would be um, a little bit unheard of for Waterhouse not to make the playoffs, given their recent history and their consistency as a top flight team in the past 10 years. But to Don Beholden's credit, as a new team uh, operating since 2019, they have also been pretty consistent in, in making the playoffs. So which of the two do you think is the better team at the moment? If you're going to bet on one to make the playoffs, which one would you bet on? I really don't want to leave Montego Bay out of it because I think yes. based on that, that's really looking good. I, I, I feel like they were they were brave and they took the game to Mount Pleasant and they employed an eye press, which many teams don't do against Mount Pleasant. So they're pretty much in the mix. It's, it's three points. But of the two in terms of Dumbo Holden Waterhouse, uh, I just feel like Dumbo Holden sometimes they give some teams chances and, and they did again on the weekend by allowing Malines to get back in it. And, and I think if they do that against some better teams, they may not be able to get back in the game. So for me, they have to address that situation where they just look, they certainly were the, the second best team against Mullines in that first half and, and they managed to come back. They did the same thing against Limehall the week before that and Limehall drew level. So that's something that they'll have to address. If they don't, then I think that could be a recipe for them missing out if they get a team that is really unsung in the day and does not allow them to get back in the game. Yeah, but so for sure, Lenny, I would be concerned. Yeah, but critically, Waterhouse and Don Beholden will face off again, won't they, in, in their return meeting for the season? That's a big game and a big game that I think Montego Bay will try to look to capitalise on when those two teams meet. Whatever fixtures they have at that match meet, they'll try to get maximum three points to, to really ensure that they close the gap again. But that's a significant game. I think that's a big game to look at. But if Waterhouse, uh, if Don Beholden don't address that situation, I could see Waterhouse uh, taking maximum in that game. But if they do Don Beholden, then it's going to be difficult to call and maybe I'd want to leave calling that one closer to the encounter than to do so now. <laughs> yeah, and what's for sure is, you know, a lot of close, close competition this JPL season. At the top of the table, we also have a similar situation between Cavalier and Mount Pleasant. Dwight, what do you think it will come down to and what separates these teams from each other? Because apart from goal difference, it's definitely not points. Um, yeah, Cavalier, they do have a game in hand now, so they'll count that, but you'd rather have the points on the board than the game in hand, because you still have to go out and get those. I think Cavalier a little bit more smoother now, and much better in terms of how easy on the high test, put it that way. I think Mount Pleasant, they're getting the result, not looking really that well in terms of... Uh, Theodore Whitmore said to me off cam, he said, I'm more concerned about not getting some goals, but not really concerned about whether or not people think his team is, is smooth and slick. Um, he's about grinding out the results now. Um, so it's going to be probably good football against a team that is willing to grind it out. They're finding a way to stay in games. And no matter how I see them suffering in games, they, they do well not to get hurt. And when they do, they respond quite well because when Montego Bay scored on them within two minutes, Green was finding the back of the net off a Daniel James pass, your countryman there uh, from Trinidad. So, yeah, I, I think they have so much quality that it's really going to be difficult to rule among Pleasant out going all the way now because even when they're not playing well, they have individuals on the park who can win a game for them. Yeah. Um, so definitely those two for sure. But I tell you what, you know, on their day, Arnett Gardens, Tivoli is really looking well, too. They were quite good against Mount Pleasant. It took 90-odd minutes for them to get past them. So, Mara is really tight at the top. And, you know, I just want to hold on in terms of any prediction right now. 
Right, and the thing is, um, Dwight, you know, we've really been seeing some exciting football this JPL season. And what I like about the competition is, you know, no team is ahead, so you can't guess a winner from now. It's any of the teams won for the take-in. I'll have to ask you, though, you didn't want to predict that one for me. What about the Golden Boot race? Who do you think is in pole position for that? It's tough to call as well. It's as tight as the table is. <laughs> I, and I see Nels now, he's into double figures. And, and I just think if, if with, with, with Allen up front with him, and if Dumbo Holden can get it right, I mean, he's just a natural finisher. I think of, of the three players up top, they're vying for it. You know, I, I really like him, maybe I'm a little biased where, is he, where he's concerned. And he just have a knock for the spectacular as well. Three on the weekend in terms of your yeah, open play and, two from the penalty spot, and that just propelled him right in the mix of it. He says he wants to get him to get up to 20, and he's working hard at it. And, and that's one aspect of his game. I feel like if he if he really gets going, um, he will really be in there to count. So yeah, I, I, I'm going to at this moment, as an outsider for it, um, if they can get into that top six, I think he'll be right in it. Yeah, one, one quick question. Just a comment on Justin Dunn, Dwight Jeremiah, because after eight games in the season, he had scored nine goals. And after, well, 12 games since then, he has just had two since then. Typically have scored a lot of goals. They are the leading scoring team in the, in the, in the tournament. But um, Dunn hasn't been as prolific. Any reason that you would identify why that is so? Not that it's a problem for Tivoli because they are getting goals. <laughs> they are. But I saw one set up when they played Mount Pleasant. And I think if that is something that they do on a regular basis, is that they played him out wide um, for a long stretch until they made some substitution and then put him in the middle later on in the game. I think they have to keep him in the frame of the goal. And I think he's better going through the middle than out wide. So I think that might also be contributing to his, his, his drop off in terms of form or goals getting the goals so i think it's it's not just he's doing as well but he's doing one for the team at time playing not why i don't think it worked for them on the day but it didn't because they, he didn't get on the score sheet and they lost the game um, but much better when he goes through the middle so that's something i think they have to to help him um to continue this goal scoring spurt and and, and really challenge well for the golden boot just get him in the frame of the goal a lot more and, and i don't think he he enjoys playing not why yeah, and Dwight, as we get ready to look ahead now to the matches that are coming up, we have Harbourview will be up against Treasure Beach. Harbourview, a team that has really disappointed this season. Many expected the team to be, you know, a lot higher up in the table. Treasure Beach, a team new to the JPL, just entering this season. And of course, has also disappointed their fans. Which team would you say has been more disappointing? I would have to say Harbour View because they were champions, what, like just about three seasons ago. Um, so, yeah, you'd expect more from Harbour View and one of the teams that you'd expect to be in that top six, certainly a team that you expect to be a top six Premier League team in Jamaica. So, for sure. And then when you look at the, the history of the Premier League with teams coming up, really finding it difficult to go down, I don't think many would be surprised with the position of Treasure Beach. So, yeah, I would say Harbour View for sure. I think it was a lot off the field more than on the field for them at the start of the season and, and they just had to get some things right. I think players were moved out, players brought in. Um, might just happen a bit too late for them and they're well off the pace. Uh, what I think will be a challenge for for the coaching staff is to keep the players engaged and, and consistent because you, you feel they're safe from relegation for sure, not because of their sparkling form but because of the two teams in the drop zone just don't look like they can really buy a win and get out of that drop zone and 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 have a view unlikely to make the top six at the moment so it, it's it's good they're gonna have to work hard to keep them motivated uh, but against Treasure beach you expect for them to get the result Treasure beach they just um they just got like a point against uh a team maligned so they will be Boy, by that, they will be in good spirit going into that game. But I just think Harvard will have a little bit too much for them. OK, Dwight, Jeremiah, thanks for talking to us. Uh, great talking to you as usual. And uh, we continue on the home of champions to cover top flight football in Jamaica, the Ren Nevue Jamaica Premier League. Thanks, Dwight. Later My this pleasure. Week.
later this week we'll be checking in with TNT as well because the TNT Premier League is also live on Sportsmax. AC Port of Spain leading in the moment in the Trinidad and Tobago Premier League and uh, we'll get an update on that. Uh, we also have some more Trinidad and Tobago football to talk in a short while because on the other side of the break uh, we get Brent Sancho and a look at what's happening in the CONCACAF Under-20 qualifying. And uh, the TNT group has a uh, home team against Canada later tonight. And Brent will talk to us about that after the break. Back in a moment.